If you've just been diagnosed with RSI, you may be recommended to see a physical therapist. And for many people, this is their first experience with PT. So how do you choose? How do you know what kind of physical therapy you need or who's going to be helpful? So today we have a special guest, Bridget Dungan. She's an, going to give us some expert advice on choosing a physical therapy and what it's like. She's a doctor of physical therapy, a certified orthopedist specialist who is also has certifications in active release technique and the Graston technique. So welcome to the show, Bridget. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing me on. I'm excited to talk to you today. Yes. So where should we begin? What's the first thing people should know about choosing a physical therapist? So I usually recommend that people who are searching for a PT ask around for recommendations. It's really nice to get recommendations from someone else um, who has been with, with a certain PT and can, and can vouch for them and can say, hey, I had a really good experience. Um, so I would say that's the first start. Uh, you can also ask your doctor for recommendations as well. Um, if nothing comes up from asking around, uh, look online, look at reviews. Um, you can definitely, I would say, look for, area, look for PT places in your neighborhood or places that are easy to get to. Geography is good because, to consider because you want it to be an easy part of your routine so you don't have to go really far um, to make it more kind of reasonable and more likely that you're going to get there. So I would look at reviews um, and look at bios. So when you look on a website, most PTs have bios. Read through them. Find something that, that stands out to you. You might find something in the bio that you can connect with. Uh, it's, really, it's really important to be able to connect with your PT. Uh, look for certifications, uh, especially if you're looking for someone that can help with RSI. You wanna make sure that they have a background in certain manual therapy techniques. There are tons of techniques out there. Uh, as you mentioned, I do active release technique and Graston, which are both very effective for RSI. Um, I would recommend those techniques, but there's, there's others out there as well. So you want to make sure that the PT has some kind of manual therapy certification. You know, it's so interesting that you're talking about recommendations because this brings up a sort of a tricky question, but somebody actually asked me once, um, she had been seeing someone and she, that person was on vacation. So she saw her colleague and she really clicked with this colleague. And she felt like she was making so much more progress with the other person. And so she asked me, you know, I feel like I'm cheating. I don't want to hurt her feelings. What should I do? And I thought it'd be a really good idea to stick with the person that you're really feeling like you're making good progress with. And uh, just because someone highly recommends someone doesn't mean that they would necessarily be the right person for you. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I think the person that you click with the most um, and that you feel you're progressing with the most is the person that you should be with. Uh, as PTs, we recognize that. So we don't take it personally. Uh, I work in a clinic with a few other colleagues of mine and sometimes patients do bounce around or they may start with one therapist and, and end up with somebody else. Maybe their personalities click better or maybe the techniques they're using are working better. And that's totally fine. You know, we don't, we don't take that personally. Uh, I would say one of the important things if, is if you do feel like you're with, with your current therapist, you're not progressing. Um, the first thing to do is communicate. Let's say you hadn't experienced another therapist yet, but you're with your original therapist and you're thinking like, oh, you know, like I've been doing this for a while and I'm not getting better. Uh, communication is key. And the therapist should recognize also that you're not progressing. Um, but the communication is important because we need to know what the patient is feeling. I might see that um, my patient is getting stronger, their range of motion is improving, and I see, oh, you're progressing. But if they don't feel better, then, you know, we need to address that. And it might be that we change up what we're doing. It might be that the patient needs to explore maybe some other options in conjunction with physical therapy. I mean, there's many things out there like acupuncture or, you know, maybe, maybe we haven't addressed um, certain activities that they're doing every day that need to be modified. Uh, so there's lots of things to consider. That being said, you know, if it's still not working, then it's okay to go try another physical therapist. You know, there's something else interesting too, because we're talking about modalities and physical therapists have many, many modalities that they are trained in to use. And 
I have found personally that some modalities are brilliant, such as the Graston technique or instrument assisted uh, manual therapy, and others don't really do much for me. And it was because the physical therapist introduced me to this other modality. So maybe that's one of the things you can have a conversation about, but I have found that my physical therapists, the ones that have been so wonderful, have been introducing things and saying, you know, let's, what, have you tried this? Let's try that. And F has been really good. Yeah, PTs have many tools in their toolbox. Uh, there's many options. And we'll start with the option that we think is gonna work best, but sometimes we need to switch things up or say, hey, have you, have you heard of this? Um, let's try this. Uh, you know, we might start with active release technique and say, well, you know, let's bring in Graston now, um, which is particularly really nice for, for RSI. Um, Graston technique is, is great for chronic, chronic ailments or injuries um, because one of the things it does is bring the body's attention to that area of pain and, and tell the body, hey, we need to address this. We need to start, we need to start healing this area. And for anyone that doesn't know, Graston are a set of, of metal tools, sounds scary, it's not, um, that are used um, superficially on the body to create, to loosen up tissue, um, to get the blood flowing, but it also stimulates cellular activity uh, to, help, to help, I would say, kickstart a healing process if it has become stagnant. Yes, and you also mentioned active release technique. Maybe you would want to tell people what that is. Sure, active release technique, um, also called ART, is a, a manual therapy technique for uh, improving mobility, uh, releasing and loosening up muscles, uh, and helping basically muscles to function better. Uh, it's a technique uh, we use our hands and the patient themselves go through motions. So I have my hands on, on a muscle, a tendon, a ligament, and the patient is either moving on their own or I'm assisting at the same time. That's why it's called active release. We're releasing structures actively. Um, a lot of times people say, oh, active release is, I've had that, or, or I've heard it's so painful. And it's really not supposed to be painful. So, um, <laughs> so we'll quash those rumors. It can be a little aggressive or it can be a little, uh, it can feel like a hard massage at some times, but it's really not supposed to be painful. Bridget, thank you so much. You just brought up the point that I was thinking, the, the next question, which is pain. Uh, sometimes people, they, I talk to a lot of people with RSI and they'll say, oh, you know, I tried physical therapy and it was so painful. I just couldn't stand it. Or, and this will be a following question of um, painful exercises. But first let's talk about pain. And some people talk about good pain versus bad pain. Um, so how do you know, or how do you explain when something might be slightly verging on discomfort, but it's helpful and it will pass? How do you explain that? So first and foremost, people come to PT because they want to get rid of their pain. You know, usually that's <laughs> why they're there. So I would say our, our first, when somebody first comes in, we want to, we want them to start feeling better. Okay. Right away. So we'll do things to help with that immediate pain, but that's not going to solve the whole problem, right? We have to figure out why you have the pain and address those issues. So there's a couple things going on here. We have to bring down inflammation and help with the pain. And we have to, you know, fix the things that are causing the pain. And we do that through evaluations and, and the manual techniques and corrective exercise. Now, sometimes an exercise can be a little uncomfortable and we usually gauge um, the discomfort and I'll ask, you know, what's your pain on a scale from zero to 10? Zero is no pain. 10 is take me to the emergency room pain. And depending on what the injury is or the ailment, you know, everyone is a little bit different. I would oftentimes say that around a two, maybe a three is generally okay. Okay. But I don't really want you working through anything higher than that. Okay. It's not fun. You're not going to want to do it. Uh, things are just going to get a little bit more inflamed. So, you know, it's, PT is not supposed to be painful, but there are some times when it's going to be uncomfortable. Um, for example, if you're, if you've just had a surgery on a joint and you have to work on range of motion, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to hurt a little when you have to try to get that range of motion back. 
uh, you don't push to a 10 out of 10 pain because that's going to make it more swollen and then you're not going to be able to move it anyway. So we really have to find that balance. Okay. So there's two things here. One is um, if your physical therapist is doing manual therapy, couldn't you say that's a little deep? Could we lighten up? I mean, that seems... Absolutely. You would want to know that. But then there's the other thing, which is more self-regulation, which is if you're doing an exercise, let's say you can do six or seven and you're fine, but then beyond that, it's just too much. Or you can do two pounds of weight, but not any more than that. So those are two separate things. One is more interior where you're you're, you're doing your home exercise program and you know when to stop. And the other is more you're working in tandem with your physical therapist and they don't, they're not aware that something is, is too much. Exactly. And that's where communication is really the key. So when you're working with the physical therapist and they're doing some manual techniques, if it's too much, tell them, you know, we need to know. I need to know what you're feeling and how you're responding to what I'm doing. That feedback is helpful for me um, to know or to adjust what I'm doing. And then, like you said, the other, the other sort of gauge of pain is when people are doing their own exercises, either when they're at the clinic or, um, or wherever they're doing their PT or at home, you know, I, you just have to be aware. And like you said, there's things you can do to modify. So if something's too painful, maybe the weight needs to be less or the resistance, or maybe you need to do fewer repetitions. Um, and that's something that you can talk about with your therapist and figure out what modifications need to be made. You know, another thing that people sometimes will say to me is that they sort of expect their physical therapist to fix the issue without them having to do the actual exercises. Because I've found that the physical therapists very often emphasize the home program as the real way, you know, what you do for yourself is going to be very helpful in boosting you out of pain and into more of a range of motion, more ability. So what do you think about that? I mean, is it that people should understand that the physical therapist does part of it, but part of it is also their responsibility? That's a really good point. So it shouldn't be that the physical therapist is doing PT to the patient, okay? Our job is to empower our patients to learn and understand how they can help themselves. Um, of course, when we're doing using our hands and, and, and doing our manual techniques, that's, that's one thing, but you don't wanna be going to PT forever. So that's a small part of it, okay? We do what we need to do with our modalities and our hands, and then we teach exercises. Uh, some of them are corrective exercises. Some of them are strengthening, mobility, um, stability exercises. And that's, those are the things that are gonna help the cause of the issue. And that's the most important thing. We have to fix what's causing the pain so that it doesn't come back. Our manual techniques are a little bit more for the right now. Let's get you feeling better right now and let's accelerate your healing process. Um, when you're with the physical therapist, let's say it's 45 minutes or an hour, that's a small percentage of your entire day or your entire week. Let's say you're seeing your PT once a week. All that time outside of when you're with your PT also has to be taken into consideration. Um, the exercises are important to do outside of PT. And then any of the things we identify during your daily life that might be contributing to the pain. Maybe it's the way you're carrying your bag. Maybe it's the way you're sitting at your computer. Um, maybe it's the amount of time spent looking down at a phone. All those little things are part of the whole physical therapy process or package. When you mention Corrective exercise, how does that differ from a strengthening or lengthening exercise? Our corrective exercise is, is, is kind of an umbrella term. Um, it basically means that we're prescribing exercises that are specific to what a person needs. So in your first physical therapy appointment, uh, we do a full evaluation. We look at functional movements, which means like everyday movements, like maybe squatting or, or um, picking something up. Uh, we look at range of motion, how much movement you have at your joints. We look at strength. We do strength testing. We see where there might be some limitations, okay? Now, the exercises we prescribe, which we call corrective exercises, are targeting those things that we find. So 
you know, we might find that somebody has weak muscles that attach onto their shoulder blades, okay, which is causing them to not have very good stability through their arm when they're doing painting or taking things off of a shelf or using the computer mouse. And that's leading to injury lower down of the hand. So I'm going to give exercises that strengthen the muscles at the shoulder blade that attach on there. And that's going to, in a sense, correct, which is why we call it corrective exercise, movement patterns. So they're just, they're just specific exercises. Thank you. Terrific answers to all of this. So I really want to thank you for coming in and talking about physical therapy. I think it's going to help a lot of people sort these questions out. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Um, I don't think so. I think the, the main point that I like to, uh, that we already talked about is really that, that PT is in, in the hands of the patient. You know, it's like, we are here to guide you. We are here to educate. Uh, and it's really, it's a team effort. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you'll come back and talk to us a little bit more. Bridget, we'll have you on another episode to talk about things you can do at home. So right. we'll see you next time.